Last week we finished off by wiring all of the planks together and then tacking them with a little bit of epoxy. The next step is to uh, pull the wires off and then finish laminating the planks. I'm pretty excited today because um, the job for today is to remove the uh, copper wires. So um, we've got what hundreds of copper wires that are we've threaded through and twisted and tightened yeah. to give the the boat. All that work we did last week, we're going to undo it today. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's exactly right. So Instructions actually say, go inside, snip it from the inside, then you can pull it from the outside. Well, you can't because it's all twisted. No. Let's try it. Okay. So I've, I've cut up four of them. That's yeah, pretty easy, eh? Ah. Did you bump your head? Did you bump your head? Ah, uh, not really. No. No, you, you bumped your head. Yeah, well... It's... Mike, there's blood coming out of your head. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so we're down here inside the boat. Okay. And uh, we'll start cutting. So let's I'll cut along the first I'll row. Start here. Yeah. And we don't want to do the bulkheads or the transoms. We just want to do the planks. One of the things we're going to be working on when we flip the boat over is we're going to be uh, attaching this skeg. Uh, we've already laminated uh, two pieces of plywood together to, to make it and we've got to clean it up a bit. But uh, it'll be laminated uh, on the bottom of the boat's stern here. It helps uh, keep the boat tracking straight when we're rowing and stuff. Um, one thing that wasn't uh, mentioned in the plans I might try and do, and I've done it on a previous skiff, is to drill a hole um, maybe an inch and a half or so, just in the back of uh, right about there. And that's going to give me, if I put the boat down, upside down on my deck of the sailboat, or if I want to hang it up in the garage, it's an extra place where I can kind of run a, a line or a rope through to tie it down and just to keep it more secure. So uh, that's uh, probably what I'll be doing next. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, hold it there. I'm going to put a screw in. Okay. After we'd uh, pulled all the wires out of the bottom of the boat, we had to uh, come back and fill the gap between each of the planks again to uh, seal them up. So this is the second time we've done that. And uh, I think I'll probably have to come back at the end of the project a third time and put another layer of epoxy with some uh, uh, easy sanding filler in it that uh, will be easy to smooth out at the end. So once the boat was upright again we had to fill up the main bulkheads and this just strengthens uh, the joint between the bulkhead and the boat and it takes a lot of epoxy to do this it's thickened epoxy so we just uh, decided to goop it on with our sticks there. Kind of messy. And it took us, uh, and we had to apply two or three layers to kind of get the size of fillet that we're looking for there. 
The plans also uh, said that we could have used, you know, a freezer bag and put it in that. And I've been a little reluctant to do that because uh, I mix up uh, this stuff in a plastic cup and then I scoop it out of the cup and I end up leaving a lot in the cup. But then if I put it into a bag, I'm afraid that I'd lose a lot of epoxy in the cup and the bag and it's expensive stuff. So I might try the bag a little bit later, but right now uh, we just scooped it on and we'll end up having to kind of do some sanding at the end. One thing that you have to consider when you're working with West Epoxy is the amine blush. It's uh, kind of like a wax that comes to the surface after the epoxy has been cured. So before you go ahead and put another layer of epoxy down, you have to clean that off. And I just use a bit of water and some uh, 3M scrub pads that work well. With the sailing kit version of the dinghy, we've got a dagger board box, which we uh, epoxied together earlier on in the project. And now we're just installing it into the boat. So it's going to be epoxied against the main bulkhead and I'm applying fillets along the bottom of the boat there to hold it in. Now, once the dagger board box has been installed, we have to get the boat ready to put the fiberglass down inside the bottom. So to do that, I used a rasp to get off some chunks of uh, uh, resin that had sort of stuck to the bottom of the boat. And then I had to do some sanding to really smooth out the boat and uh, or the bottom of the boat and uh, also on the first plank. And then I got the vacuum out just to make sure that there's no uh, dirt or grit or no bumps left that uh, might, will become a permanent part of the boat if uh, once we put the fiberglass and epoxy down. The next step was to put down a bead of thickened epoxy in the gap between uh, the bottom and the first plank. And we used uh, these freezer bags that we were able to put the epoxy into and then clip a corner and just squeeze it out, kind of like I guess you'd decorate a cake the same way. First time I've ever tried that and it seemed to work pretty well in this joint. The next step was to uh, put some tape down just above the first plank in the hull. So that's as far as the uh, fiberglass and epoxy was going to go. And uh, once the tape was in, then we started to fit the fiberglass and it's uh, nice to have two people to help do that. And the fiberglass cloth we spread out and then trimmed to size just over uh, the uh, green tape there. Unthickened epoxy on the bottom and just spread it out and then let it cure. Okay, last, last night we uh, finished off by uh, laying the uh, fiberglass cloth down on the bottom of the boat. The epoxy, we got one coat of epoxy on that. And then we've uh, trimmed the fiberglass at the top of the first um, uh, panel off the bottom there. So uh, we've done all we can do in the bottom right now. The next step, according to the plans, is that we're supposed to put uh, the gunnels on the boat. So the gunnel is actually two pieces on each side. So this, these two pieces will could go on the uh, port side here. There'd be another two on the uh, starboard. And they're laminated to get together and then laminated onto the boat. I'm going to hold off a little bit on that. Um, this boat's going to be a tender, and I'm a little concerned about you know, hard wood like that uh, with the boat you know, bumping into the sail, large sailboat, and also the damage that the wood uh, rail might. Uh, so I'm looking at ways of going around that. Um, Chesapeake Light Craft, they've got a kind of neat little thing you can screw on, and it's a bumper that goes all around the boat, and it would really protect the boat. But uh, to me, it looks a little big and heavy for a small boat like this. And uh, also, it's quite expensive. You know, it's over $250 US for this boat. So by the time it's shipped up here, it's going to be uh, quite expensive. So I watched another video on another uh, um, a couple from New Zealand. They built one of these boats uh, that they've taken all the way, uh, looks like from England to New Zealand. And uh, they've uh, attached a rope around that. So I'm kind of considering that. So I'm thinking about maybe grooving, you know, you know with a router and then laying a three quarter, three quarter inch rope into that. So I want to test that a little bit on a test piece before I get going. So we're going to forego the gunnel right now and we're going to flip the boat over and work on the bottom.